to Jordan. Here's Michael in the foul line. A shot on Elo. The Bulls win! The Bulls win! The Bulls win! The From game winning shots to history making plays. Manning on a play fake. Bulls right hook. Ball down the right side. We love them. Odell Beckham Jr. made the catch with one hand. They bring excitement. But also, disappointment. But despite these disappointments, there are always moments that make up for it. Sports make up a huge part of our lives. Have you ever considered them an idol? Athletics are a major part of our society and can often take priority in our lives, making them idols. Idolizing athletics involves worshiping the sports, the athletes, and oftentimes the money involved. First, we must define what worshiping means so that we can understand how our society worships sports. Then we'll discuss why it is that people worship sports. And then finally, we'll look at the effects that this may have on the individuals participating in those sports. Worship is giving ultimate value and worth to something, praising it above all else. In the Christian worldview, this praise is ascribed to God. In Hebrew, the word that translates to worship literally means to fall before someone on the ground, touching your face to the earth. In the New Testament, the word for adoration communicates a similar idea of subservience, to kiss toward or to kiss the hand, or to give or pay homage to. Adoration, as understood in modern times, means respect, reverence, strong admiration, or devotion in a certain place, person, or thing. When we worship, we are saying, this one is worth more. At the same time, we are implying, I am John the Baptist communicates worship with the proper heart of a worshiper when he said, He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3.30 We think of worship occurring only in the church through singing and praise, where in fact we are surrounded by worship every day and everywhere. However, we give our worship and praise to things other than God. That is referred to as idolatry. God's people have committed idolatry repeatedly throughout history. A popular biblical example is Exodus 32, 8. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Israelites made and worshipped idols while Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments from God. The Bible clearly communicates that the only one worthy of worship and adoration is the Lord. All others fall short in front of him. Revelation 4.11 says, Worthy are you, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. People in general want something to worship. We are naturally religious in nature. Um, so society uses that to push us to worship sports and athletes in general. They do this in several ways. One of them, they put the athletes themselves on the pedestal. They use them as a symbol of hope that no matter how many hurdles we go through, we can still conquer things um, like the athletes do in the sports. Um, another way is that sports is a huge impact of gender inequality. They, women are in sports much more than they used to. In the 2016 Olympics, uh, there was a record of 292 women participating, which was a huge thing for us, for girls, to look up to, to have women athletes. And so, and then finally, 
people in general are. We want excitement in the moment, action-packed things to watch, and sports is definitely that. So society uses that to push us to worship sports and athletes, that it's something that we need to function, it's something that is on this pedestal, this glorified thing that we need to survive on a daily basis. How does worshiping sports negatively affect individuals and the society at large? The main effect sports has on the individuals involved is the dehumanization and objectification of athletes. Worshiping someone is a way to dehumanize them because it objectifies them, putting them in the place of God. Romans 1.25 says, They exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshiped and served the Creator rather than the creature, who blessed them forever. Amen. By worshiping the athletes, we objectify them as machines built for the purpose of performance. This puts tremendous pressure on athletes, causing sporting pressure that leads to mental health. Uh, sporting pressure includes competitive anxiety, the fear of injury, or body image pressure. These pressures lead to a concerning increase in mental health illness for elite athletes. A real-world example of this kind of dehumanization came from Laura Ingraham from Fox News. When reporting on LeBron James, she told him to shut up and dribble after he talked about his experience with racial injustice in an ESPN interview. LeBron, LeBron James has since coined the term more than an athlete and makes humanizing athletes a big goal of his. In conclusion, worship is giving ultimate value and worth to something, praising it above all else in the Christian worldview. This praise should be ascribed to God. And athletics is a priority in a large ma majority of people's lives, whether it's participating or watching. The worship of athletics includes idolizing certain sports, athletes, and in the case of professional sports, the money involved. This quote, popular culture itself is religious in nature and we actually construct altars in the various expressions of our culture, one of those altars being sports. People tend to worship athletics and athletes for multiple reasons, but one of those being the fact that athletes are an inspiration to us. Athletes give us a sense of hope that no matter what challenges or hurdles we, ha we have in our daily lives, we can conquer them all. By worshiping the athletes, we objectify them as machines built for a purpose of sporting performance. This puts tremendous pressure on the athletes, causing, quote, sporting pressure that leads to mental health issues. Examples of sporting pressure and competitive anxiety is the fear of injury or body image pressure in some sports. Like when LeBron got criticized to shut up and dribble and has now coined the term to his benefit on his merchandise and has made it a profit and has an outreach program to not shut up and just dribble, like the Fox News lady said to him. These pressures, which are increasing as sports become more and more of an, of an idol look, lead to a concerning increase in mental health illnesses for elite athletes.